Hi, it's Terry. I'm down here in my basement workshop, and I can finally call it a workshop, whereas before it was just a basement. So after living in this house for a little over four months, I finally have lights put up, I've got most of my tools down here, and things are generally squared away and I can start making stuff. And now that it's ready, it's really one of my favorite places to be, so you'll probably see more videos from this location. But for today, I want to show you something new. Actually, it's something old. You'll see what I mean. It's this. Now, if like me, you were a kid in the 1980s, and like me, you were always thumbing through the Tower Hobbies catalog, you already know what this is. But for everybody else, this is the Kyosho Optima. And it was an RC car that was released in 1985. And it was kind of a game changer back then. And it really took four-wheel drive off-road racing out of the Stone Ages. It looked tough, and it was tough. And pretty much everybody I knew who was into RC cars wanted one of these. Now, I've had a lot of RC cars over the years, but I never had an Optima. And the reason I have one now is because Kyosho has re-released this kit. So nostalgic guys like me can finally get their hands on the cars that they couldn't have when they were a kid. Now, I should point out that this new Optima is not an exact duplicate of the original. There are a few changes. I don't know what the complete list of differences is, but of the things that I've noticed, they seem to be improvements. For instance, now you get an adjustable slipper clutch on the transmission. That's a good thing. And also, the new car comes with a full set of ball bearings, whereas before, that was an upgrade you would have had to pay for. Now, something that is exactly the same is that you have to build this car piece by piece. Not necessarily a bad thing. Actually, it's a good thing. And Kyosho gives you a good manual that guides you through the whole step. Now, I recorded my assembly process, and I know you're dying to watch it. So let's go. There's obviously a lot to do to get the Optima put together, but don't let that concern you. All of the parts are packaged in a very organized way, and the manual outlines all of the necessary steps in a very methodical fashion. So the process actually goes pretty quickly. Now early on you're going to have to make a decision on whether to use the chain drive like the original Optima or to implement the included optional belt drive. I like the idea of the chain drive so I went with that. A lot of the tools that you'll need for assembly are included in the kit, and the same thing goes for the greases and shock oils and other things. The Optima does not come with any electronics, so I was able to take care of most of the electronics I needed by using Kyosho's four-wheel drive starter pack. It includes a 2.4 GHz radio with a pistol grip controller and a mini receiver. It also includes a waterproof steering servo, an electronic speed control for brush motors, and a brush motor. Now you can use a modern brushless system in the Optima, but I decided to go old school with mine, and it actually has pretty good power. The Optima comes with a clear Lexan body that must be painted. It also includes decals that let you replicate the box art by just painting one color. You paint the inside of the body white and then you add the decals to the outside. I decided to go a more traditional route and I used only paint to create the main body colors. 
This is actually a deceptively complex paint job. There's a lot of masking involved and kind of meticulous trimming of the tape, but I think that stuff is kind of fun, so I enjoyed doing it. Now, there's also a driver figure included, and I painted him as well at the same time that I was painting the body. The funny thing is, I had completed painting some of the details on the outside of the driver before I realized that there's a clear protective layer over the plastic, so I had to peel all of that off and start over again. And then the second time around, I used some of the stickers that are included for the seat belts. Now once all the painting was completed, I used curved Lexan scissors to trim the body and get it fitted to the chassis. There's a lot of work to do there, so don't rush it. And to finish things up, I added some of the sponsor decals to the outside of the body. And now it's ready to go. You can find out more about my Optima build in the written article at tested.com and I'll include a link in the description below. Now you may have also noticed that my Optima is a little bit dirty. That's because I've been driving it. So I'll also have a follow-up written article and another video that talks about how the Optima drives both at a racetrack and at the park. So I'll see you then.